You are now sitting at the wave table. Welcome everyone Howdy. to the wave table episode 13. I'm here with Espioth, who recent, re- <laughs> recently released like three tunes, like right at the same time. <laughs> it was, um, it's pretty funny because I've been following dub wubs for a while. Um, and I saw your release come out with them. So I followed you. And then like the next day is like another release. And then I check your SoundCloud profile and then there's also a remix on there. Like how, how did all that come about? Um, yeah. So I think initially I had everything scheduled to be like week after week after week or so. Um, so everything made sense, but with the, the Scafetta remix, it didn't, no, nobody really told me when I wasn't in loop for the, the release. Of that. So I'm like, that's going to do whatever it's going to do. Uh, the Dubwebs is going to come out a week after Signal Flare uh, Adventure Mode I'm talking about. And then uh, Dubwebs had to reschedule for a Spotify thing. Right. And I'm like, it's fine. It'll be around the same day. And I thought it was going to be on the 9th. And then it wasn't. So, I mean, it's it ended up being all right. But <laughs> it yeah. felt like five tracks <laughs> fell out right at the same time. <laughs> uh, just a quick question. Am I allowed to curse? Oh, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> step over boundaries if I'm not going to. No, you're cool. Uh, I've said it so many times, but forgotten to change the brief. Like, I need to put in the brief, like, yes, you can just say fuck, cunt, you know. Okay, the whole cool. <laughs> Blink-182 song that everyone knows. <laughs> it would suck uh, It would suck exponentially more if I wasn't allowed to and then did. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to make sure Yeah, that was all set up. Cool. Appreciate it, man. Um, so, yeah. yeah, having found about you recently, I'd like to kind of hear your journey from the roots of like where you first discovered music and got into making music all the way up until yeah. kind of where you are now. Yeah. So, um, it was started in high school. I'm, I'm relatively young. I'll say that now for, uh, maybe not relatively young, but I feel like I'm generally young for where I'm at at least. Um, I'm only 19. So, uh, I started in high school, like sophomore, uh, with my friend, his name is Crimson. Now his name is Anthony. Um, but no, we just started playing with FL and screwing around with, uh, with samples that was just in like a somatic sample pack that we didn't know even what somatics was. <laughs> uh, and I thought I was the shit. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm so good. No, um, man, I stopped producing for a while and I didn't take it seriously off and on for a couple of like six months or so. Uh, and then I started taking it seriously, but I didn't have like a, 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 a schedule. The idea was like at least a song every two months. Yeah. And then I got challenged to a dub war that went around where like you had 24 hours to make a track and then oh, post Jesus. it. And uh, I, I think I killed it actually. I made Megalodon. And then after that, I promised myself one, I, I basically showed myself I can make a track in 24 yeah. hours. Um, and then started two week releases from then on. And I'm still on. Damn. That. That's uh, really Megalodon frequent. was like three months ago. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, the monks did, uh, <laughs> monks, the oh God, the Nikki explicit of rhythm. Anyway, uh, monks, released like a track a week and that's how he blew up he just grinded it out i didn't know that holy shit yeah yeah it's been working really well i mean i grew from 250 to 400 that's more recent stuff but quite frankly all i have is more recent stuff because i've only been producing for about a year or two now Mm. yeah i think a kind of a recurring theme in this podcast is that just producing really really frequently and just releasing new tunes constantly is just the the way you really improve at an extreme rate. Um, Because if you spend too long trying to refine every single tune, then you don't kind of learn as much. Yeah. uh, My opinion with it, at least, is um, like, it's the same thing with technology and movies and video games. So if if you sit in production and development for a video game for five, six years, the next console is going to come out and you have to restart. True. So if you're sitting on a track for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, like way too long, you're going to progress in skill faster than the track is. And then you have to, you're like, I can do way better than this track. Why do I even work on it? Bam, you don't release anything. Yeah. Uh, with art, especially, it's like, it's never done. It's never completed. It's just to what gets, what gets to a point where you're done with it. Um, so you just got to get things to be where you're content with faster, I guess. Hell yeah. That's one thing. Bro, I wish I knew this much shit when I was 19. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, I've had a couple people that I've been hanging out with recently. Um, it's the whole Mythos crew that I'll might get into later. That um, have like exponentially. There's no word that I can come out of that. No, 
I've learned way more than I've ever learned ever right. with this group because we've all just bounced off of each other's ideas and we're all skyrocketing in skill level. Yeah, having a, and I think that's the way to do it. Having a supportive like group where you can like your friends, but you can also tell each other like what what needs to be improved is so so huge. You've got to be able to tell your friends that their baby is ugly. <laughs> yeah, that's, <what> I, that's a <laughs> I heard that once. So that's great. Totally. So um. I wanted to ask what kind of is inspiring your music currently, given like the whole, you know, frequently changing landscape of EDM. Uh, yeah, I, I think I feel like uh, the whole scene is taking a shift into more melodic things and more let less one note the whole time and yeah. presets and just random shit. Um, and I mean, I kind of, I, I started doing melodic stuff before the scene shifted, so it's totally going to seem like I'm just following the trend, <laughs> but that hadn't happened how it did. I mean, you've but, got um, proof that you were doing it before the scene shifted, so that can't say shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I, uh, I feel like music theory has a very big role in a lot of the stuff that I do, and I think it's going to become a very, very big role and a very crucial step for a lot of producers to have to take. Yeah, because I know a lot of rhythm producers. Like I, I know somebody that I'm kind of teaching music theory to that they're like, I don't really care. I just play stuff that sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's part of it. But also, if you want things to be more engaging, other than this sound sounds cool and this switch up is sick, um, music theory is really a big part of it. Yeah, I feel like it's it's easy to make chords that sound good on their own. But tying the composition together as a whole is really where the music theory helps out a hell of a lot. Yeah. Um, so, and speaking of like melodic stuff, I fucking love adventure mode, dude. Like that, uh, honestly, it seems like a kind of more digestible version of polyrhythm. I don't know if that's like insulting or not, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, polyrhythm is a sick track. Um, I feel like I have my own opinions about polyrhythm. <laughs> um, everything I make is being called polyrhythm. Right, that's the genre that like the audience has assigned my music <laughs> to. Maybe, maybe that's narcissistic of me to say. I don't know. I've I've seen it on like five tracks where people are like, "Is this polyrhythm?" Like, no, <laughs> not at all. The thing that made polyrhythm cool is that it was in seven four. Yeah, but, but, but screw that. It it has a melody. It's polyrhythm. <laughs> um. I feel like that's going to be, uh, I, I don't know. Polyrhythm sound design is cool, but yeah. it's a, it's a track in seven, four. So like, it's hard to compare it to this. It's a different genre of music entirely. Um, it wasn't bad. I just wasn't the biggest fan because most, I, all Western music is in four, four. So. Yeah, I think, um, I guess when I say it's like an easily digestible version of polyrhythm, I mean, like yeah, it's in the the typical four four um, format, but then also I just feel like the the kind of sound design and the rhythm and it just I don't know how to explain it, but it just seemed like a kind of similar, but not not like straight up copying because obviously it's not four four and you didn't set out to copy yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think. Uh, what Phonon did, I, I've heard of his name a couple times here and there, but he wasn't doing anything big. I thought he was a completely different guy. I got him mixed up, but that doesn't matter. Um, he, he's using like really underground rhythm uh, sound design for something that's completely not rhythm. Yeah. And I think that's what's really interesting about the track. Um, but that's the same kind of sound design I'm using is the, the, the small shooters that yeah. have a melody to them or something and a lot of plucky stuff. So I, I can definitely see the similarities. Um, it just wasn't meant to be that yeah. way. <laughs> it just happened. Uh, fair enough. Thank you for um, taking what I was saying and actually, you know, putting it into words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I get you. Um, so I feel like there's some clear inspiration from chip tunes in your tracks. Would be would that be safe to say? Or Did you say chip tune? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I thought I thought you were talking about an artist I'd never heard of. Before. That's <laughs> uh, no. Um, that it's mostly that one synth in the beginning, uh, that plucky tappy synth. Um, I don't know. I kind of just made it in uh, serum and was like, "Well, that's sick." Oh, cool. I'm gonna do something with that. That's kind of how most of my things happen. It just ends up. I know there's. Uh, it's very similar to Slice by Ulusail as well. The the drop and the stall and stuff. Um, 
I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I don't really take particular inspiration. Things just happen. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like this. Let me try some. Oh, it ends up sounding like that. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. I love how like you can make something like not referencing anything and then it kind of like harkens back to older sounds. But yeah, they're fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. So most of your releases are like rhythm. And I was wondering if you've ever kind of messed around with other genres or considered making any other genres. Um, I'm really interested in glitch hop, oh, but yeah. like the, the Kyoto funk, um, Cohen sound max out kind of thing with that, where that really like distorted white noise bass. I've been trying to figure out how to do that recently. Um, that in trap and future bass, a lot of my older stuff is hybrid trap. Uh, but that was my excuse for saying, I don't know how to make it flow. So it's hybrid trap. Now. <laughs> uh, me and my girlfriend recently made a song that she wrote a while ago um, called Puppet Master. That's like more pop and Cruella kind of future oh, based. Cool. And then it goes like Excision, uh, Elenium, Stupor, Gold, where it goes hard on the second drop. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been screwing with some other genres. I just haven't released it because I don't think it's the same kind of quality right? Yeah, that I can get with the genre I make. If you, uh, I definitely think it's important to... Do more genres though, because otherwise you get bored of your genre. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. Music anymore. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? I was just going to ask if you do decide to release different genres in the future. Do you think you would do it under Espioth or create a new alias for it? Well, I thought about doing. Uh, I, I decided against this, so I can say this now. Um, but I, I thought about doing a second alias that was just pure like rhythm, rhythm, like mm. no melodies, no. No color base, nothing. Just, just rhythm. I was gonna call it fuck, but with a V. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Uh, I decided against that because, like you just said, I, I make rhythm, so there's no point in right. Yeah, making a second alias for rhythm. I, I don't think so. I think SBF doesn't. SBF the name itself doesn't limit me particularly. Kind of like how Wooly can make future bass, and nobody's like. But um, uh, what's what's an artist that like very much limits uh Sudden like death. <laughs> like uh blood thinners or Sudden death kind of thing. Um, you wouldn't expect them to make the base house. Yeah. It's like, okay, but, oh, yeah. That's, I'm trying to think of like death set producers that have really edgy names. It's like, uh, there's no way you can make anything lighthearted with that name. I'm black. There are some examples. I just can't think of it. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have like, but, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you good. I just realized that I didn't actually answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I'll definitely release it under SBF because um, I tried intentionally to choose a name and like a, a, a field that wasn't going to limit me. So I had a music project instead of a face to yeah. upkeep. I can make what I want, kind of like Bandles. But like Bandles doesn't mean anything. You can just, they can make trap, they can make heavy dubstep, they can make whatever the fuck they want. That's very liberating, I assume. Yeah, cool. I kind of feel the same way about my name, but I've been, I've recently been feeling like, I know the visual branding all needs to tie together. And if I make like a future bass track and then a death step track, and then like the future bass cover is like pink and sparkly and shit. And then the death step <laughs> one's just red and black. It's going to look weird as fuck. <laughs> well, what I would do there is um, release a, release them together to kind of like even them out. Right. And then that- like put them in the same single. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I would do. Cause then it's like, it, it's almost it, it levels it out almost to where it's like oh there, here's he- here's both of it take take one or the other to take your pick of the songs right you don't have to listen to both but everybody gets something there it's kind of uh, like but, um if you've ever played Yu Gi Oh there's a card called Change of Heart where like one side is just like a demon or devil or some shit and the other side's an angel um yeah, yeah. that's a I get that so do you have like a typical process when you start a track i'm always really interested to uh to hear people's perspective on this um i mean what i try to do i I know a lot of people will make like a collection of sounds that they've made and then like pick that sound and be like oh i have a flow in mind i want to make that flow and then make a track out of that um no disrespect to that but i i don't like using the same sound yeah. Um, I'll use the same technique of making the same sound, but it's a different sound. You know what I mean, like, um, I want a vocoded uh, sub modifier. That's what I call it, but that's probably not what it's called, where it just goes over the sub and makes it a little bit more crunchy and right. wet. 
Um, but I won't use the same one. I'll make a new one. That's just a little bit different. Just so it's a little bit more authentic. But um, a lot of the songs that I make come from sound design experiments. Kind of like I, 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 I throw FM from B, from sub, from <laughs> A again, from backwards. Uh, I'm using the, the volume automation and going all, all the way upside down. Just, none of those things made sense, but that's kind of the point. <laughs> just trying things that don't make sense. Um, and then it does like when, like throwing a reverb filter through vocoder that mm. ended up being kind of cool. I got to give that a shot. Uh, yeah, dude, vocoder is powerful. I don't know if you use FL studio, but vocodex is one of the most powerful synths or, or effects that I've ever used in my life. It's just so many applications to it. Yeah. I used to use FL and I've like, I switched to Ableton and overall I like Ableton better. But I do want to go back to FL sometimes because they've got like Hama, um, Vocodex, Fruity Granulizer. Um, I thought Ableton had a better granulizer. That's what I've been told. I, I'd heavily disagree. <laughs> I really, oh yeah, I okay, really yeah. don't like the Ableton granulizer. <laughs> damn. Okay. Um, and yeah, I saw Code Pandora making some like top layers for machine gun bases with Fruity Granulizer. So. I kind of want to go into FL and just make like a full sample pack of just top layers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you're using different DAWs, I can see that being absolutely worth it. And um, yeah, the Vocodex thing as well. Like I reckon Vocodex is way better than Ableton's Vocoder. Um, you know, I feel like the Ableton Vocoder is like kind of a cheap rip off of other things. Damn. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't use Ableton, so I, I wouldn't even know. Yeah, so you kind of start with sound design, and then I assume that leads you into making the drop first. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so, see, I, I have a kind of a, a unique take on this, I think, or maybe not unique, but uh, different, because I know a lot of people have a problems taking their drop and making it fit with the intro. But my drops have melodies in them already, yeah. so I just copy whatever the melody was and make it the intro, and it's like. And then I just take multiple instruments and make it repeat the same pattern or similar patterns that make sense. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely the drop first because I, I I don't like putting myself in a position where I have an intro and a build up and I don't know what the intro is saying. Yeah. So I, I like having the message or like the feeling and then building up to that feeling. In a way, if that makes sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I've been preaching like a similar thing for a while. Um. And yeah, I learned, I kind of learned a similar thing when I was studying music production. Uh, the teacher basically said, like, if you have a drop, you can kind of copy elements of the drop to foreshadow it beforehand. And, but don't like fully repeat the melody, just like tease it a bit. And then when the drop comes in, it's just going to be massive because it's familiar, but it also adds new stuff. Yeah, I feel that it's like um, taking it, it's it's it's. I feel like it's somewhat of a future base element almost, where like the entire intro will follow the drop, and then the the uh, or follow the the same melody. Sorry, and then the drop will take it like up seven notches. Yeah, and it's like, oh my god, you just <laughs> did that. You, I didn't realize you could do that with this melody, <laughs> where it's all sorts of fleshed out, and that's always fun. Yeah. On the other hand of that, then there's. Um, having an intro and a melody and a chord progression and throwing that whole thing away. Like for example, jump scare madness on Goblin's Lair. It's this very beautiful orchestral piece and then it just stalls. And then this heavy bass comes in and just throws the entire intro away. I, I love that style as well. I want to try that. One day. Yeah. I love both. Like they can both be done so well that they're like equally impactful. Yeah. Uh, so you've released on dub wubs and uh, I forgot the one that Signal Flare was on. What was it? Uh, it's Wicked Records. Oh, Wicked. Yeah. And then um, what other labels have you released on? Because it's quite a few, right? Uh, it's probably <laughs> not a lot, actually. I mean, I've only been doing that. I've only been sending to labels for like f five weeks. Oh, really? Not not long. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I didn't like sending to labels because um, I had an experience with Isotope. I was the co-owner of Isotope for a while. I won't get too into it because it's not like I'm bitter toward them or anything even went wrong. But um, I didn't have a, a, a music quality that fit ISO. 
Uh, and okay. so personally, I took that like, oh, well, they don't like me. And so I, I, I left with my head between my legs and um, I just started doing solo releases. Uh, and then I realized like, now that I have a label, it's like, okay, well, even if they're next to you, that doesn't mean they have good music particularly. Um, but I've sent to a bunch of different labels. The only ones that really contacted me back are Dubwubs and Wicked around the same time. I think Dubwubs hit me up almost the same day. That was <laughs> nice. Uh, God, I don't know where else I've released. I've released on Mythos because, yeah, duh. Maybe it was just Mythos um, and Isotope. Uh, I th- yeah, I think it was Mythos, ISO, Dubwubs, and Wicked. Oh, and EDM Collective now. Uh, remix. Yeah. remix. But I think that's it. God, I'm gonna feel like a dickhead if I did <laughs> if I forgot one. Um, that's still yeah, a good bunch. That's, that's what I'm gonna go with for now. <laughs> yeah, I've sent to infinitely more labels. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of them do not respond. I yeah, do not understand that. Oh, uh, dude, it's just down to the amount of submissions they get. Like, I, yeah, I can't I imagine being the guy who has to sift through all that. Uh, uh, yeah, I feel that. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, submitting to labels can be very intimidating. Like, even as someone who's been producing for like seven years, I still like submitting to labels. I'm just like, you know, I I feel it in my stomach. I'm like, oh man, I I hope this goes well, you know? Um, Yeah, I feel that. So, considering you've released on like five labels, I was wondering if you had any tips for just like kind of getting over that hurdle and just sending things off, even if you don't necessarily think it's going to make it um well always i I say always shoot high uh there's a saying that i just can't remember but it's like shoot for the shoot shoot for the moon and maybe you'll hit a star or something i'm not sure but it's like shoot high and then go down the list and then if you don't think you can make it on nsd and nsd says yes you're like oh (laughs) well i just proved myself wrong like um the worst part about that though is time uh as i was mentioning before if you work on a track for too long you'll progress faster than the track is like, it's basically a benchmark of your skill at that point, And then you start moving past that. point. Um, so like I sent an EP to a label and I already hate the EP. <laughs> and it was almost, it was only a month <laughs> ago because I'm like, I'm five times better than I was a month ago. Um, but yeah, I mean the, the biggest thing I feel like a lot of producers have an issue with when they send the labels is rejection and the worst that will happen uh, I don't. I promise that a label's not going to be like, no, you suck. Stop producing. Hang yourself. Like, no, that's not. <laughs> um, they're going to probably be like, hey, this isn't for us. Sorry. Yeah. Or send us something new, please. Um, so I, th- I think the worst thing that could happen is just they don't respond. And if they don't respond in like a month or two or like a couple of weeks or whatever your standard is, just send it somewhere else. And if they come back after that, um, I know that was something I had. It's like, what if I send this to one label, give up on them and then send it to another. And then the first label says yes. Yeah. That's I, I can't. It's like, yo, you took too long. Uh, I mean, it, it's a race to get the music out. So if, if a label takes too long, they have to be understanding like, okay, we're the ones who screwed up here. But yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot. A lot of people think it's similar to sending a friend a track and then the friend not liking that track when it's nothing like, I don't think. Yeah, it's completely. So, so your friend can be like, you're trying to impress your friend and then they don't like it. And you're like, oh. Uh, well, it wasn't my track. It was, <laughs> <laughs> um, but with labels, it's like their their job is to listen to your track and hear, hear it at like the, the the base quality or like quality levels instead of what, whether they like it or not. So it shouldn't be so scary. Yeah, and um, being also on the other side as the owner of Mythos Records, and also having experience on Isotope as well in the past, right? Um, yeah. Is there anything that you'd like to see in the submission email? Like, obviously, the music's got to be there, but is there anything else that you need to see, like, wrapped up with it to make it, like, look nice for you? Just gave me a thought. Imagine somebody's like, oh, actually, that's happened. Like, hey, here's my track. They didn't send a link. And I'm like, this is great, but I have nothing to listen to. No, um... I don't like seeing clips because it's like, I can't judge this off of the right. whole track because then you can have anything in the second drop yeah. and I won't even, it, I, I've already said yes to it. So I can't works in progress is the same way. If I say yes to a work in progress, that's not done and mastered or whatever. Um, whether you master or not, that's a different conversation. Um, you can then change the track after I've said yes. And then I may not like it anymore. 
Yeah. So I can't, I cannot say yes unless it's a finished product. Um, but as far as the email goes, it's just like, I, I, you can either send a link, which I think is a little bit on the scummier side. Cause it's just like, here's my link. I don't want to talk to you. Um, I don't want to see seven paragraphs because I'm not going to read it. Just blank face, but it, a quick, like, Hey, my name is Dan, AKA SB. This is what I do. At least in my, I would like to see back. Um, Hey, my name is Dan, AKA SB. Here's a track I put together with dude. Um, let me know what you think. Here's a link. You see it. Like you just don't, you don't you just keep it professional and short. Cool. Because nobody wants to hear your whole life story. And that's for later. Yeah. For <laughs> yeah. It's good to know that like, uh, there's kind of a clear and concise format that people should stick to. Cause I, I think a lot of people do either go on the side of just sending a link and hitting send uh, or like doing the like 10 paragraphs. Um, yeah, the link isn't so bad. It's just like, talk to me a little bit yeah. and let me have the conversation here. But, uh, that's, maybe that's just a per- personal preference. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, you're good. Um, the way I equate it to real life is it's kind of like having business cards and just going up to someone and giving them, giving them a business card and just not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. That's a, that's a good, that's a really good analogy. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> okay but what do i do with this <laughs> is this a submission or are you just asking me to listen to it i don't i don't get it oh uh, man that's great i can someone please like make a video of that <laughs> <laughs> somebody go do that yeah <laughs> in real life and send me a video that looks like uh, uh don't actually it's horrible <laughs> oh yeah don't be one of those just to prank bro people oh god person. dude um pranks have had their life on the internet yeah they died <laughs> They died four years ago. So what made you want to start a label in the first place? Um, you know, I'll be real. I think I, I've always wanted to start a label. And then I had the opportunity to be on Isodope. Um, and I saw how a label runs. And I envied that. And I kind of want... I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a control freak. Right. So I think... Again, nothing nothing against the ISO guys. They're all awesome. But... um. I think I wanted something that was my own. Yeah. Like my own personal thing. Um, and so I, I just, I mean, that's right when the uh, co- uh, yeah, quarantine started. Uh, so I'm just like, screw it, dude. I have nothing else to do. Let's do this. Like, and I did. Now it's happening and I still can't believe that it's happening. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's crazy to me. How are you guys going in terms of uh, finding artists to release their music? Because I know for small labels, it can be a bit tough to find uh, releases at first. Yeah, um, we actually got a bunch of re- like submissions before I even mentioned that what the email was, oh, uh, other than Jesus. having it on the SoundCloud. <laughs> so I think that's un- unusual. I don't know what that, that's about. Um, like a couple of people saw SBOth release on Dubwubs and then found my profile and then saw right. that I was the owner of another label. Yeah. And they're like, oh, let's go send there. There's only 40 followers. Okay, sick. I need, I need submissions. <laughs> No, but um, I forgot what the question was. Can you repeat? <laughs> um, I mean, you pretty much answered it. I was just asking uh, if you guys were having trouble with releases or... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, I think it's going to get to a point. That's what I want to say. It's going to get to a point where I need to start hitting other people up. Like, right. please give me a song. I'm desperate. I will pay you. No, I won't. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that'd be that. I think that's just the struggle of the first year of any label mm. just having to go to people yeah but having released on dub Wobs and with how well it's going for them i assume you guys are probably um you, you're probably able to chat to them and ask for some tips and stuff because they say they've like since covid holy shit they've like wrapped up and gotten insane amounts of followers and plays and consistent releases it's great to see it yeah, after I um after I got a release, I saw how the process of Dubwubs worked, and I was like impressed. The the, the contract is eight pages. I was like, Jesus Christ! Um, <laughs> no, but I asked. I, I reached out to the owner and um, Makai actually he was on this. I forgot. Um, and I was like, Hey, do you have any tips? I mean, I don't want to copy your style because it's like everybody has their own sacred process. And I don't want to impede on that, but if you have any tips for me to build my process, I'd be grateful. And granted, you don't have to. Um, no, but me and him had a really great conversation about all that. That's awesome. And that was that was really really nice to see. 
Dubwubs is a solid label, and I will be releasing there again one day. Nice, because <laughs> I was like, that was like one of the best experiences I had with a label. That was really solid. Yeah, that was my um, they were my first label release, and honestly, uh, you know, I guess my bar is set high, and if it's not like that next time, if and I'm on a different label, then I'm gonna go right back to Dubwubs and be like, yo, what up, guys? <laughs> 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 no, I mean, yeah, I feel that. Like I've already. It's gonna be hard to, to beat double ups. I mean, they have their they have their shit locked. They, <laughs> yeah. they have. I mean, like I'm I'm looking at my process. I'm like, oh god, <laughs> <laughs> I have to beat that. No, it was just very streamlined. It was very uh, everything I needed was right there, and I didn't have to hound them for a date. Right. And it was like everything I needed was there before I needed it, and that was just it was beautiful. Yeah, beautiful work. Is it um? Is Mythos a one person operation at the moment? Uh, running it, yeah, that'd be me. Yeah, um, my girlfriend helps out a little bit here and there, but I've I've made it clear that like I kind of want it to just be me right. right now. Yeah, because like I said, I'm a control freak, um, and I like to control the aspects of how things get done because then I can assure that they're done correctly. Yeah. So it's nice that she helps out, but she, it's not like we're running it together. Really, it's more me that she helps out sometimes. Yeah, it's... which no, no, nothing against her. She's Amazing, dude. I mean, I'm not. That's not what this is about, though. <laughs> so almost like um, a contractor like basis, rather than being like if we were talking in money, she would be like a contractor yeah. rather than a full time employee. Yeah, like a like a repeat contractor that yeah. I hit up. Like, hey, I need this, and she does art sometimes. Cool. So yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's wholesome as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. I love it. God, I'm uh, thinking about her again. Sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the whole the whole girlfriend talk because I'm, I'm I'm whipped. <laughs> Go ahead, man. I'm I'm sure she would love to see like a a clip, just like she'd probably she'd probably go blush <laughs> the entire time. So um, <laughs> so kind of going off uh you know the girlfriend uh thing, I was wondering like. What do you kind of like to do in your free time when you're not producing or thinking about label stuff? Uh, well, reason I this is really weird for me because I don't actually like movies or TV. I was of the opinion that like uh, video games are better because I can control what's happening. I'm a control freak, as you can see. No, but like it's an interactive experience where I can take what I want with the media I'm consuming at my pace. Yeah. Uh, I can finish it in two hours or I can finish it in seven weeks. Um, but I mean, I feel like a lot of it, my free time is my producing. Right. Cause like I currently, the job I have allows me to work from home, but I don't do a whole lot at home. So I'm, I'm free to do, I have a lot of fucking time to do the label. I think that's something you need for a label, but, um, my, my free time just consists of playing games and watching TV and or not even TV, just movies. Cause cable is, I'm not going to get into that either. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So tell me about cable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, I, I'm surprised cable hasn't died yet. <laughs> yeah, me should have oh, a long time ago. I, I haven't had cable in five years. And I, that's only because I'm 19. So when I was 14, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just dumb. Yeah, I, uh, it should have died before Blockbuster and all that. I mean, I understand why Blockbuster died, but as Blockbuster died, cable should have just crashed right after. Yeah. <laughs> just the, the TV television is stupid, and everybody's watching Netflix and other shit. Mm. Why, why try to catch the episode on TV if you have Netflix and like thousands of forums where you can just? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> it's kind of annoying though how many like subscription services there are. Like, I wish there was just a bundle package, <laughs> just like all of them, but like. 15% That's kind of how Amazon is. Something. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, Amazon, you get if you get Amazon Prime, uh, you get Amazon Prime Video, I think, for a little bit more. But then you get Twitch Prime, and then Twitch Prime gets you like hundreds of thousands of things in games. Every yeah. Day. So it's like a it's a chain reaction effect. Um, and I think there's something that you get Amazon Prime for free or something. Oh, really? Maybe not actually. <laughs> no, it, it's you get it for free with a purchase of something else. But I think right. I'm wrong. I think it's something you get for Twitch Prime, but whatever <laughs> it's um i think i think i prefer that to traditional television yeah just any day 
because at least you can like pick and choose exactly what you're paying. Yeah, for. you have like the whole archive. Yeah, you know. So um, that EP that you sent off uh, has that uh come back with a release date yet or anything? It hasn't even come back with a response. Uh, it's been two months, which is fine. I don't. But that's okay. Um, but. <laughs> Two months ago, I was doing different things than yeah. I am now, you know? It wasn't two. I think it's a month and a half now. Uh, I'm really excited. It's going to a pretty big label. I don't want to go too much into that, though. Um, yeah, and if it, if it comes back with a no, I'm just going to start releasing it as solo releases right. because I have better ideas for a bigger EP. So, Cool. Is, yeah. <laughs> is there anything else in the pipeline that uh, is waiting to be released? Quite a bit. I have, like, four or five or six collabs. Damn. There's there's five collabs that haven't even gone anywhere yet that are like finished and just waiting. Wow. Um, Oh, there's four collabs that are just sitting and waiting. There's two collabs that are out to, for somebody to listen to. And there's one collab that is um, being like, is going to be released in November. Hell yeah. Uh, And then I have like the four the four originals I ever made ended up being an EP, which I realize now is stupid because <laughs> I was like, I'm complaining like, oh, I don't have enough originals, and I'm like, all my originals go. <laughs> now I don't have access to them. That was dumb. Um, I have like one or two originals I'm getting ready to release, and then I have like three more collabs that I have or that that are in the works, sort of. God damn, it's a lot of tracks. It's gonna be a busy <laughs> but risk of 2020 slash 2021 <laughs> oh dude i hope um i hope there's more by the time i get i, I hope i have two more eps to make by the time this year ends. <laughs> i'm i'm not stopping this the speed fucking mad props dude i mean you gotta yeah well, i mean uh, you, you can in, in, a, in a in a scene where you become irrelevant a snap of a finger you gotta you gotta try to get on top of some sort of hill yeah while you have it Oh, like, Ula Sile was big for a while, and now I haven't heard anything from him for like a couple months. Even if he's released something, I haven't heard of him. Um, Disciple's been murdering it. It's just they're on top of the hill right now. Fuck, that's all it is. Literally, like the minute we started this podcast, the Code Pandorum EP and the Phase One EP dropped. So, <laughs> <laughs> oof! <laughs> I didn't even know. Did they both actually come out? Yeah, I thought that was. I, was, I thought that was tomorrow. Shit. Okay, damn. I was. I was, I was on Twitter, and uh, Phase One was like your. Uh, less than an hour till it drops so yeah fucking excited to listen to that right after this <laughs> i wish we had yeah, um, I've, uh, i wish we had permission to like play the music so we could do like a reaction podcast or something that'd be dope <laughs> that'd be cool yeah i um i actually stopped listening to like mainstream <laughs> mainstream <laughs> let me hit you. no i stopped listening to dubstep quite frankly right um I noticed the more dub stuff I was listening to, the more either discouraged I was getting or uh, overly inspired, which that's always a good thing if you're, you're at your computer. But if you're in a car 20 miles from your house, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and then the inspiration fades by the time you get home. Yeah. So it's, or I would get bored of my genre. So I stopped. I don't, I mean, the people I listen to are like rap artists. Gotcha. And I'm not like that type of rap. Don't, don't worry. Um, <laughs> no, but. Uh, and there's some like Panda Eyes. There's one or two tracks of Panda Eyes that it's just certain songs that have meaning to me that I listen to. But yeah. other than that, it's like I, I haven't listened to Code Pandorum's e- recent EP or any of the teasers or even the re- full Reinforcements album. Huh. I heard like Bleepware and uh, some other things that I just don't like. Asora's track, and that's like it. I just don't, unless I'm trying to DJ, I don't fuck with right. bigger tracks because I just, I just don't think there's a point. Do you ever find yourself wanting to create like rap or the other stuff that you listen to? Uh, I've made rap beats. Yeah, uh, I I don't trust myself enough to rap write lyrics. <laughs> I'm, I've never done that before. Um, but I think the the other thing I listen to, I, I, there's def, there's a clear other genre that I'm just completely leaving out. I, I guess it's probably two different types of rap, like Eminem. Uh, and like fuck around rap, but then like Eminem, that's like serious and like we're talking now. Yeah. Um, and then th- along those lines, it's like Whit Lowry and people that actually are saying shit. Yeah. And having telling a story. And I think 
yeah, I, I don't, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I don't think I want to. I think I'd probably panic, uh, and forget how to forget how to use my DAW. I've done that before. Oh God, <laughs> that would have been uh, interesting to experience. I imagine. Um, yeah, because yeah, I sometimes when I'm not listening to dubstep and stuff, I'm listening to a lot of metal or rock or whatever, and I find myself just going home well i'm talking pre-covid times but yeah going home from uni and wanting to play guitar and stuff then feeling guilty about not producing dubstep because i've been inspired by the metal but i'm not as good at metal as i am at dubstep so it's like kind of weird <laughs> i mean i don't think you should ever feel guilty for not producing i think that's yeah i mean i mean i, mean, I know that's probably just like a choice of words thing but yeah. um like do whatever you want you know don't don't focus on whether it like what you should be doing because if if music is what you should be doing you shouldn't be doing music <laughs> because it has to be something you enjoy doing yeah like if you if you feel forced to do music take a break immediately true true or at least that's what i would advise because breaks are extremely not essential there's sometimes where it's like i mentioned forgetting how to lose my dot or use my dot that's like a real thing that happens to me <laughs> I'll I'll be producing and then I'm just like I can't get this sound to be good. I don't know how to unmuddy it. I don't know how to make it sound cool. I don't remember. I it's not in my head. So I stop producing for two weeks. I come back and I'm th- I make the whole track in a minute or in like an hour or so. So I, I think I think breaks are a lot more uh, important than people realize. Yeah, I think Vital Merge stressed that as well when he was on the podcast. Um, is there anything? any kind of specific things that you like to do when you take those breaks or is it just kind of take a step back from music and just do whatever you feel like doing? It's really that yeah. it's um, only go to music. If you feel like doing music. Yeah. And it's going to be a little harsh, I think, but uh, if you don't ever feel like doing music, then don't. Yeah. Because what's the point? If it's not something you enjoy doing, don't, it's just pointless. Um, like, I mean, so the, the, some a lot of the times the breaks aren't even like mentally like I've checked them off. It's like I'm a week into the break. It's like I haven't produced for seven days, and I don't want to. <laughs> or like I'll open a DAW and like uh, I've, I'm lucky enough to have a computer that's like strong enough to run two FL Studio projects at the same time while Jesus. running my game, while running YouTube, <laughs> while running Discord. <laughs> so I can just tab in. I died in Call of Duty. I'm going to tab out and listen to the song real quick and be like, that's still shit. And then go back to the game. <laughs> and that's, that's it. So it's like, I, I, I feel like that's very, I think that's a good thing to be able to continuously listen to it and gain opinion, opinions on it. But dead ass, if you don't want to produce, just don't. Yeah. And um, yeah, it might sound harsh, but like realistically, like if you take a break and you don't ever want to produce again, then, you know, don't, that's that's just don't. that's the path that's you know best for you. You gotta stay away. But you know, most of the people listening to this, they'll probably take a break and be like, "Holy fuck, I needed like you know, get I need to scratch my itch and get back to production." <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. That's called um, motivation and inspiration and shit. Like you feel like you need to because you want to, and not because you feel like other people are want you to. That's that's what you need to get to. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I thought I had something else to say, but I, I didn't. So I think I just have to leave it because either that or we just sit here in silence yeah. for an hour. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah, dude, thanks so much for joining me and congrats on all of the recent releases and all the projects you have in the works. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to follow you and kind of see how your sound progresses. Cause actually I got, I want to ask, um, when did you, how long ago did you, finish production on like adventure mode and signal flare signal flare has been done for a while uh signal flare i've been waiting for the release for like three months mm. uh, that was rough however that also means three months ago i was doing this melodic weird shit so fuck you scene um uh, with adventure mode i actually live streamed it i was like screw it i'm gonna do a live stream or a production live stream and um i made the drop and then I was struggling with a melody and then people joined and were like, this is like the best song I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Dope. I was like, I don't, I don't like this song as much. What are you guys on about? It's actually not my favorite song that I've made at all. Even probably top three. I mean, not even, um, it doesn't mean it's, I like it or it doesn't mean I don't like it. Um, 
but I made it in a day. Damn. In a day, like two months ago, two, three, okay. something like that. I don't know. No, around the same time, but I know adventure mode came afterward and then ended up coming before. So fuck it. Yeah. Six. <laughs> things happen like that though. So if you made those like a couple months ago, basically, and then this EP, you also made like one, two months ago or something. Um, yeah, I just can't wait to see what kind of stuff you're making right now. And uh, I can show you. I can show you a project if you want. I don't know if that works. Uh, if even how to do it. I don't think we can do it on the podcast. But ah, uh, okay. If you, oh, I'd be happy to like link to a video or something in the description if you want to do something like that. Whatever works. I don't really mind. Yeah. Um. But yeah, man. Looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, thanks again for joining me. Everyone, thanks for having me, dude. Don't forget to go check out SBOth. There'll be a SoundCloud link in the description, as always. <laughs> Dab on the haters. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Peace, guys.